Find functional hilarity at the Biffa Emporium. So we start with the cabin trip. The day is finally here. And she gonna help her friends improve their relationships. Cause Lord knows if anybody knows about a successful union, if anybody knows about fidelity, love, trust, and friendship, it's Rashida Frost. Mm, mm, mm. Carly's man isn't for the bullshit, so she brings Shekana. They pretend and they fighting, but he can't stay away from that cottage cheese ass or that bird nose. He love that heifer. Uh-huh. So we in the vans, and of course, the beans are spilled in front of Kendra that Jock was messing around with Carly last year at the cabin. Okay, so Carly gonna say, well, we didn't have sex. He just had his penis out in the hotel room. And you didn't sit on it. I don't believe you. Okay, so now let me get this straight, Carly. Nobody know Kendra, and you ain't gonna put your business out in front of her, but you sure gonna tell Tierra about her man running around. But you sure gonna tell Sierra about her man running around. Oh, maybe Pooh gave BK a little puss in Cancun. A little Cancun cooch. So Tierra gonna slap the shit out of BK, and I approve. So Kendra mad at Jock, and she's got things on her spirit as a woman she want to talk to him about, but not yet. You got to drag it out. Now Sierra going to get in BK's ass for what she heard on the bus ride. Okay, so now BK starts to fess up, and something happened in an appropriate conversation at the least. Puss at the most. That Cancun cooch, I'm trying to tell you. We got a half-ass baptism, and now the commercial break. And now, cut to Monice the Neglectful, back in Atlanta. And she's waiting on Akbar. Good luck with that. So Akbar like, yeah, 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 I'm late, but what are you really mad about? And if I was Monice the Neglectful, I wouldn't be mad about anything. I mean, hell, any minute away from my child is a good minute. So look on the bright side, Momo. But she starts whining about the scrap shit, and we know that was fake as fuck. But I'll listen. Girl, we eight episodes into the season, and you finally just mentioned your son. And where is he? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So Momo mentions that she's working with Tokyo, and Akbar goes off. I'm sorry, but Tokyo has actual music. I've never heard of you, Heffa. I mean, we just found out you was Candy Cousin. Back at the cabin, Carly Red is going to give a sexy demonstration with a sex toy and has toys for all the girls. I mean, get your bedroom Carly on, Heffa. Get your bedroom Carly on. So Jock gonna bring up the Carly bullshit again. And so Kendra like, okay, let me take you in the room and yell at you. Like I said, drag it out through the episode. Might even have two parts on this shit. You know how they do with the trips. So Kendra confronts him and young Jock puts it on his mama. Ain't shit happened. He kept his penis in his pants. Oh, Lord. Jock, your penis isn't big enough to tattoo Kendra on it. And don't nobody want to see that on your fupa? Oh, God, so Rashida gonna lead a positive exercise. But can you lead us into a fuck for this trip? Because I, I ain't got fucked to first. I have been bored for 28 minutes. Scrap gonna tell Bambi she need to be more grateful. For what? What, what does she have to be grateful for? What have you done? other than get in a car accident and worry her ass to death. I ain't heard hit to first, second, or third. So that does lift and lighten the mood, and now we got Akbar at some cemetery. I'm fast forwarding. Later that afternoon at the cabin, Bambi's butting into Jock and Kendra's business. So Bambi seems to be on Jock's side because she says Carly Red's timeline ain't jiving with her. Meanwhile, Monice mad Akbar ain't working with her, so she gonna take her two cent and go work with Tokyo. Monice did not just say she thought Scrap de Leon was gonna be the man that restored her faith in men. Monice, you like pussy. You can have all the faith in men you want, but you're still gonna like pussy, girl. You still gonna like puss. And that's okay. So Monice tells Tokyo, oh, Akbar mad, we working together, girl. And you know Tokyo gonna take the bait. She like, I ain't done nothing to that heifer. I don't even know her or her cheap wigs. So the next morning, very early, 
Carly's turtle waddles up to the door. Aw, he show up with a used Louis Vuitton bag. That's one of Mona's cast-offs. You can tell because the edges are frayed and nicked. Bag got more wrinkles and lumps than Carly's ass. Carly man apologizes for not telling her and Carly's whining about situations she done been in in the past. But Carly, you've lived a life of ain't shitness, so we really don't give a fuck about your past miseries because we all know you had a large hand in bringing that on yourself. Oh, thank God we are at the end of this sorry ass episode. I'm looking forward to the 911 bumper. Bumper. So we back at the cabin and Rashida trying to get shit back positive again and get this dysfunction out of the relationships. And you certainly know about dysfunction. And now Rashida fesses up. I cheated too. And now that we know that, it's like, okay, that's why you stayed with Kirk, because you like, well, child, if, if I spread my legs, I can't get too mad when you spread yours. So during all this peaceful chit-chat, we get on the fact that Carly's the one starting mess in everybody's relationship. Ah, and now we've got Sierra fessing up to a little cheetete. And the episode ends with a teary BK and a no fuck. And a no fuck. Let's catch up with Hustle and Soul. Oh, God, we gonna open with trifling, thirsty, pining ass Thandy. Oh, I miss Lawrence being around, but I'm gonna make him proud. Why don't you make yourself proud and move the fuck on? Find a man that loves you, not his baby mama. Find a man without a baby mama. Back in Miami, Lawrence wants Anna to get the staff in line. They're in line, they're fighting in line. Anna is in a bad mood for some reason. I guess it's that wig. Looks a little greasy. That wig screams bad mood. You put that joker on, you in a bad mood. You gotta smell it. <laughs> Anna just fired Cola. She said, oh, no call, no show up. <clears throat> Stay your ass home. Ah, Anna knows about the phoniness. She's sick of cutting checks for someone talking shit about her. I can understand. Actually, no, I can't. I've never paid anybody who talks shit about me. Cola said, well, I'ma just enjoy the free house until they kick me out. I get paid by WeTV, not the Pank Teacup pop-up. They said the shit in Miami clothes, the shit in New York clothes, I guess they just act like it's a restaurant for the show so they don't have to get food service permits. Uh-oh, Cola quit. Well, good, you're in agreement. Cola quit and Anna fired you. Whatever you want to call it. Just get on off the show. So Cola's like, well, they jump in my friends, John John don't approve, and I still got my WeTV salary. You know, that 500 an episode. Oh my gosh, she says she want to marry John John and have his baby. You know, I didn't realize you were just an average-sized version of Sam from Little Women Atlanta. Crouching boredom, hidden lesbian. So Cola says she ain't there, but she wants it to be successful, and maybe one day her and Anna will have a sit-down. Meanwhile, the manager, Nikki, said, I can't get in no more trouble, so I guess she's got some pro baby tea. So Chef Lawrence is trying to be Chef Lawrence, and it's like, Anna, what do you think about this new shrimp and scallop dish? It looked good, it did look good, but Anna had a point. People come here for chicken and waffles, we gonna end up losing money buying expensive ass shrimp and scallops, and then the shit don't sell, and it goes bad in two days. Two days. I know, I know. Lawrence wanna buy more kitchen equipment, and Anna like, mm-mm, mm-mm, you got everything you need. Anna is low-key right. You run a soul food restaurant, people come to you for soul food. They want excellent soul food from you. If we want a fish joint, I'll go to a high-end fish joint. I'll go to Blue in the city, or, or where else do I go? I'll go to Le Petit Boucherie on uh, South 7th Avenue and Chrissy in the gay area. You've gotta have the right food for the right venue. If I'm coming for soul, I want soul. I ain't going to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles for the oysters, especially the raw ones. So Thandy calls Lawrence begging for a visit. Mm-hmm. You trying to go to Orgasm Island? There are so many men in New York. Why are you caught up on him? I'm sorry, honey. You can find some more Beijing dick. I promise. 
I promise. I know Thandy did not just call this man a strong black king. If he was strong, he wouldn't be cheating on his fiance with you. He's a weak peasant, dear. A weak peasant. And you're the mark and the moron who fell for him. Mm, it's a damn shame. Ah, oh, Lord, so John John comes to an office beach day. Of course, Lawrence and Anna aren't there, but it's, you know, the staff. The staff. Cola says, I love showing off John John. Why? He ain't fucking you? Girl, I'm the... <laughs> I'm sorry, I ain't gonna show off nothing that ain't mine. I've always said, okay, you see a Mercedes parked on the street unless you got the keys, what's the fucking point? And girl, you ain't got key to first. You don't even know what door to go in. You trying to open up your front door while he's waiting for you to come in his back. Oh, oh, we got Breezy, the girl that got jumped, and she's like, well, I don't work there no more. Then why are you here? Why is John John here? I'm sick of this periphery shit. So now Nikki's spilling her tea. She got in a fight with her cousin and is facing 15 years. Child, the twins eating off people's plates. Keep the shit plausible. So Anna gonna shoot a commercial and hope that it goes viral. Well, we know that didn't happen. Lawrence, however, is unconvinced a commercial is the way to go. I, I mean, you see commercials for restaurants sometimes and you go, like, I saw an ad for a place called Wahitsa, which was Washington Heights Pizza, and it looked real good. It took me a minute to get there, but then by the time I got there, it was closed. But had they been open, they would have gotten my business. So maybe they don't work. Mm. Lawrence lets her have the commercial. We gonna see how it go. Cola and her family fast the fuck forward. Oh God, John, John. I I'ma keep it on fast forward. I don't give a shit. He ain't gonna tell her he gay right now, so let's just keep it pumping. It's gonna be an awkward, boring, pointless family scene regardless. So it's the day of the teacup commercial and Anna gonna give us a twerk fest. I don't want to think about ass in my chicken wings, but then again, you know I'm not heterosexual, so maybe it'll get the men in there. Maybe she's trying to give a Hooter tea. But Hooters is failing, so good luck. <laughs> they got the bartender in a chicken suit. She says, shit, I can twerk it near, I can twerk it far. Oh, this commercial is a mess. Lawrence is the king of fried chicken. I can't even give that a bark bark. Oh my God, they got the twins and chicken head. All for a restaurant that doesn't really exist. And this twerking ain't even that good. I am unimpressed with this twerking. Oh God, this is a mess. The producers need to be fired. I agree with Lawrence. This ain't who you are and you shouldn't feel like the fried chicken king. I mean, you're a chef. You're going after a Michelin star. Yeah, yeah, I see the difference between you and Anna. I get it. Anna just trying to make money off a chicken joint. You trying to really put an imprint on the food world. Now Lawrence is saying Anna has changed. I don't think Anna changed. I think you're finally getting to see her in full bloom. She's always been this way. You've just kept her under your thumb, knocked up barefoot and pregnant. Now that she has a restaurant of her own, Oh, honey, she's gonna run things her way. I gotta say, Anna, you got piss poor delivery, but girl, you got some real points. Ain't nobody like South Beach's party, South Beach is, if you gonna make money and turn over tables, you gonna have to shake some ass. She, she got a point. Like, you trying to have a real Epicurean high-end experience, but you aren't there yet in your career. This fool gonna say everything is not about money, then why is your New York restaurant closed? Why are you on this show? Honey, it's all about the coin. If you can't pay a bill, you ain't got option to first. It's always all about money. That's just the way the world works these days. Now maybe in the 70s or the 80s, when you could get by with a regular middle class job, you know, you was secretary, he working at a plant. That could have been true. But today, it's all about the C-O-I-N coin. Ah, oh, Lord, Lawrence running to Brooklyn. Oh, it's time for John John to speak his truth. Oh, God, Cola, ever since we spent time with my family, the question of me and John John's future has really been whirling through my head. 
I, I, honey, he gonna be your Judy till the day you die. I can tell you that. Girl, you've been with this sissy for three years. I'd be embarrassed. Oh, God, Cola wants to start a family. I don't think John John wants kids. I think, like me, he just wants dogs. He don't even give me a gay that wants kids tea. I, I don't even think you want kids, but if you want them, hey, you know, find a straight man to get you pregnant, because he, he ain't gonna be able to help you. Like I say, from the streets of New York all the way out to Vegas, it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're famous, because you can't get someone pregnant in the anus. No, you can't get someone pregnant in the anus. Yeah. Okay, this fool gonna say, are you okay starting a family with me knowing I'm with somebody else? So right after he says, you know I'm with somebody else, right? The waiter walks up and asks for their drink order and he gonna say, do you have anything with Hennessy? Hennessy? Hennessy! I guess that's like Don Chadal, mispronounced. I have never heard of Hennessy. Oh, good. He's like, I, I, I don't think we should work on a baby because, you know, I'm trying to get pregnant in my anus, too. Girl, you really thought you was gonna go from an open relationship to a closed one? Honey, Wendy Williams low-key spent the tea on that. Spilt the tea on that. It's all fine when we're 35, but, you know, when you want to have a baby and get serious... It gets to be an issue, cause somebody ain't gonna wanna close the gate. He gonna tell her he just ain't ready. Mm-hmm, for vagina. Oh Lord, Lawrence is back in Brooklyn and is gonna be thumping on Thandy. Child, the Brooklyn's pink teacup is closed. It ain't in nobody's blood. So Lawrence tells Thandy he's engaged to Anna. Oh God, now he's in love with two women and he doesn't want her to feel abandoned or used. Uh, yeah, that's what happens when you choose one over the other. Unless y'all all gonna have a thruple relationship, and she might be down with it. I think you could honestly get Anna and Thandy to be down. Mm, no, they always gonna be fighting over that dick, and I don't know why. I bet you he put Beijing on his ball sack, too. It's just as gray as his beard. He said, I'm always gonna love you, and child, that flipped Thandy switch. Skirmish! Girl, whoop his ass, girl, whoop his ass. She said, I put on 40 pounds of highlighter for this bullshit. Girl, she jumped over the table, kicking, punching, screaming, windmilling, doing it all. Let me see that in slow-mo. Yep, she getting him with the swat, 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 kick to the face. Get him with the Vans, girl. Well, you're off-brand Vans. You're off-brand Vans. I'm sure Anna loved this scene. And she leave, and that's where the shit end. But I'ma see you soon for something. So as my mug say, tell a kin, tell a friend, tell that heifer you hate to head over to the Biffa Emporium for a cute collection of hoodies and mugs. Link below.